and some trigger moments that have guided you. What have, what is, what have those been? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it's awesome to be here. <laughs> Chicago Pirates. Uh, I gave my life to Christ when I was in fifth grade at Christian Heritage Academy, founded by Wayne Grudem. You might know Wayne, a very famous theologian who actually has become a very dear friend. And I was always told that politics and the Bible don't mix, that the government and the Bible are at odds with each other and just do the gospel all the time. And that's it. And so I, I started Turning Point very long story short. <laughs> um, in June of 2012, instead of going to college, I took a gap year, and it's been eight and a half gap years. Very blessed journey. And a couple years ago, I met my now pastor, Rob McCoy, who is terrific. And some of you might follow him on, on YouTube. He's friends with Jack Hibbs, and I got to know Jack through Rob. And a lot of our mutual friends, Steve Smotherman, all of them kind of came through that. And Rob was speaking at an event, and I had no idea who he was. And then he finished his remarks by saying, oh, I gotta go speak, you know, go give a sermon in church. I said, I've never heard a pastor talk like that before. So we got to know each other, and he said, Charlie, I wanna challenge you. He said, you're a Christian, and I wanna tell you that not only does the Bible say a lot about civil government, not only does the Bible say a lot about how we should interact with our leaders, but I think you should talk more publicly about that. And I said, well, Rob, I, I was taught in the church that we don't do that. And he's like, no, I'm not, I'm not having you pray for this. We started talking, and I realized um, that there, there is, there's an immense amount of scripture and biblical backing. And so just so you know uh, why I believe what I believe, I believe the inerrancy of scripture, I believe in the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> I'm not a theologian. Um, I don't go around talking about eschatology or anything. I leave that to the experts. Um, but I'm not afraid to talk about my faith. And I go to college campuses, so you don't have to. And I bring this message of truth uh, to sometimes the darkest places, even darker than Seattle at times. Believe it or not. But what really brings me here is, as I last year, a year and a half ago, I started speaking at churches, and it was the most nervous I ever was. Um, just because I, I grew up in a, in a church environment where I knew that if you got one thing wrong, it would be a very judgmental thing. And especially around this idea of, of politics in the church, I just thought I'd be the first person ever to do that. Politics is not the right word, just government, values, morals. I'm just using a filler word for that. And so then I started to get invited to more churches. And I realized that when I was giving these speeches at churches all across the country, over 75 of them in the last year during the lockdown, because it was the only places that were open across the country. <laughs> when I was giving these speeches, people were not, they were not listening to me. They were waiting for me to tell them what to do. Is that the body of Christ was awakening into an active posture, saying, Charlie, I feel my values, my morals, just being steamrolled on a daily basis. Just a cultural onslaught, if you will. Tell me what to do. And I realized, as I dug deeper into the history of our country, and I do two podcasts a day, and I do two hours of radio a day, and I spend two hours a day just studying and diving deep into the history of our country, that I was really never taught the proper history of America, which this country was founded by activist pastors, the Black Robe Regiment. It was improved upon by activist pastors. It was saved by activist pastors like Billy Graham, who called communism Satan's religion in a crusade in 54, 56, and 58 all across the country. Most people don't know that about Billy Graham, that he was an ardent anti-communist, one of his most beautiful sermons. And that one of the reasons we're in the place that we're in right now is that the counselor to the king is silent. And the counselor to the king is the body of Christ. And the counselor of the king is the pastors in the churches. And while we've been doing budgets and baptisms and bigger buildings, the secular humanists, they've been taking terrain. And I'm so just encouraged by what you're doing here, Alan, truly, because you know this is the time for us to rise and stand. And the Bible says very clearly, occupy till I come. And we have truth. 
and it's time that we start expressing it and communicating it to a dark world because boy, it's a dark world. You talk to churches around the country and I'm sure most of your audiences, most of you are here because you are already sympathetic to what you know Charlie stands for. But can you talk to us about a church like Westgate that has been very careful to stay separated from government and the political arena, but is beginning to awaken to what we are losing? I saw a video the other day of the police in the UK literally breaking into a Roman Catholic mass and arresting, handcuffing, arresting the priest and taking him out in front of his people. And and I like I've heard you say frequently, that, that's gonna be coming to a church near yes. you sooner than we anticipate. And that's not that's not conspiracy theory, because it's happening in Canada. It's right. happening here in America. I'll, I'll tell you about Calvary Chapel San Jose with Mike McClure, uh, who's a dear friend of mine, who's facing two point eight million dollars in fines because he opened his church last May. Never closed. So do what you're doing right now has cost him two point eight million dollars over the last year. But he says, you know what? I'll pay the fine. You can take my house because the people we brought to Jesus in the last year is worth it. Amen. And scripturally, why I believe what I believe. I believe that we as Christians are called to impact all things for God's purpose. That includes the arts, athletics, business, and yes, government and civics. We have a very special thing here in America. We take it for granted. A constitutional republic that was founded by people that were Bible-believing, regular church-attending, spirit-filled yeah. activists. We don't talk enough about that. The Black Robe Regiment of Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield and Roger Williams giving thousands of sermons all throughout America that, that really got the American population in a posture ready to seek liberty and to say that our rights come from God, not from King George. But it says very clearly in the scriptures, uh, Jeremiah 29, 7, to say, to seek, which is a Hebrew word, badrash, which means desire, demand, the welfare, shalom, shalem, the peace of the city of which you are in. So that's, that's a very, and then it goes on to say that your welfare is tied to the city's welfare. Yeah. So that's a really heavy verse. Let's unpack that. Basically what the Lord is saying while they were in exile, by the way, this is why they were not, not in Israel, this is Jeremiah 29, 7, that if you don't get involved in what's around you, your welfare, your ability to worship your creator, your ability to bring more souls into eternity, which is our mission statement, is all of a sudden going to become a lot harder. We know this to be true. We know this just through a very, very basic reading of history over the last 100 years. We know this from the Soviet Union. We know this from uh, Cuba. We know this from... China, there is, just so you guys know, the window for religious liberty is shrinking, shrinking in the world, not widening. Let me say that again. The window for religious liberty is shrinking. That it's becoming harder and harder to be able to gather, to be able to worship, whether it be in the Middle East, in Europe, in parts of Africa, that oppressive, authoritarian type regimes see the church as a threat, and they're doing everything they possibly can to go after it. I also, some, I also will say that all throughout the Old Testament, people that we will revere, revere as heroes, Daniel, Jeremiah, Nehemiah, Joseph, Esther, Mordecai, they all sought to influence secular government for God's purpose. And I believe that's what our mission should be. We need to be the counselor to the king. And the Founding Fathers wrote extensively about this in the Federalist Papers. You know, John Adams, the second American president, a good man who had a phenomenal son, John Quincy Adams, our sixth president and a, a phenomenal thinker and one of the first abolitionists in the 1830s to really speak out. He said the Constitution was written only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the people of any other. And what they're getting at, and they talked about in the Federalist Papers, is look, we're betting on the church. The church stops, the country folds. So what, you guys ever do a trust fall? Where you just kind of just fall backwards? Well, for the first Great Awakening, the second Great Awakening, third Awakening, and fourth Great Awakening, America was in free fall, maybe because of alcoholism in the 1820s, slavery in the 1860s, or even secular Marxism in the 1950s or 1960s. And every time it was the church that caught the country and brought it back into its proper place. 
And we as Christians, we've had it really, really good the last couple decades. We haven't had to worry about police officers.